We have to turn black. There we go. All right, so now we're ready for page three of the test. And this is like the lab that we did in class with the bolts. So remember, we had a ring stand hanging like this. We had a base here. We have a ring uh, out here like here. We had a bolt hanging on it. Uh, there's a nice high quality bolt drawing. All right, and then we had a styrofoam cup. It was sitting over here. First, we had we had the bolt sitting in fire. You may remember the fire hanging in a Bunsen burner, so we had fire right here. All right, so we heated that bolt. Then we took the Bunsen burner away. Oops. There's a Bunsen burner's gone. And then we had a styrofoam cup that we'd put water in. It was sitting over here. So we took the styrofoam cup and put it over there underneath the bolt. So now when we put the bolt, when we put the cup in the bolt, remember the cup had water in it. Mm -hmm. So the bolt lost energy to the water, and the water gained energy from the bolt, and the total energy change was the same. So I kind of led you through some things you need to think about. So we had the mass of the water. We need to know how much water is in the cup. So we know that the cup had water in it. Together, the cup and water weighed this much, and then the cup by itself was that much. So if I wanted to find out what was the amount of water in the cup, I'm going to need to... Subtract. Yeah, you subtract that. So that'd be zero, zero. That'd be a two, four... So it looks like 142 grams. Now the change in temperature of the water, now we're talking about the water inside here. So we know the water inside started at 23.1 degrees, but it ended at 53.5 degrees. So that's what this data right here tells you. Okay. Okay, so if I want to know the change in temperature, remember we were doing changes in temperatures on the previous pages. They're easy because they're whole numbers. These are not whole numbers, so you write them down. So you got 53.5. You're going to... Uh, Subtract, right? Right. So subtract 23.1. So you get a 4, you get a 0, you get a 3. Carry that decimal down. So that's 30.4 degrees C. So now we're ready for Q of the water. Was there a temperature change? 30.4. There you go. So you're going to use that formula. Q is equal to M CP times tel temperature change. All right, so what was M in this case? So it was the mass of the water. We just found that out. 142 grams. Yeah, it's 142 grams. The heat capacity of the water, we know what that was, because that's the same as they've always been, and I, plus I put it right here. So that's, see that number right there, 4.18? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's joules per gram degree C. I just put the units on, I got room. And the change in temperature, we figured, was what, 30.4? 30. .4? 30. All right, so everything cancels out except for joules. Let's go ahead and do the math. 142 times 4.18 times 30.4. Get a pretty big number. I get 18,044 joules. I actually got 18,044.224, but I only have three sig figs, so I'm, I'm already expecting putting too many in. So just call it 180,000 if you want to. All right, so now we need to find delta T of the metal. Now remember we said that Q of the water is the same as Q of the metal. So do we know Q of the metal? Yes. It's that number right there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We're trying to find delta T. Since that's a formula that has delta T in it, we just use the same formula. Except this time, we know what Q is. Do we know the mass of the metal? I yes. think so. 142. Well, that was the water. Oh, okay. The mass of the bolt was up here. It was 55.76. So you go back up and look for that. Write it down, 55.76. The heat capacity of the bolt I put up here also. And it's 0.449 right there. And that's joules per gram degree C. And the change of temperature, we don't know. We're trying to find that. So we just put delta T there. So now I'm going to have to, probably the, to, to keep it straightforward, I'll go ahead and multiply these two numbers together. So 55.76 times 0.449. So I get 25.0364. I'm going to go ahead and write down everything I get and round at the end. So 25.0364. Uh, grams canceled, so that's J over C. Oh, that's supposed to be a C. 
multiplied by delta T. And that still equals 18,044. Mm -hmm. All right, think carefully. What do, I do, what do I do to get the delta T by itself? Mm -hmm. Divide mm -hmm. um, 25.03. On both sides, mm -hmm. right? So 25.034 J over C, 25.03624 J over C. And remember, we're talking about that multiply, when you multiply, um, when you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. Mm -hmm. So that's going to cancel joules out. Joules out, and you'll just be left with C. Okay, so that's degree C. And then 18,044 divided by 25.03624, 720.7. Which I could just call, since most of this problem has three sig figs, we just go to 721. All right, so our last thing is TI of the metal. Right. So if you go up to the picture again, remember the metal was hanging in a flame before I took the flame away. Mm -hmm. So we're going to assume that the metal was the same temperature as the flame. But when I put the metal in the water, the metal got way colder in terms of temperature. Right. All right. So the temperature had a massive drop, several hundred degrees. We know that the final temperature of the metal would have come to this, be the same temperature as the water in the cup. Would that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know the final temperature of the metal, that's this number right here. The 53.5 right there. Final temperature of the metal. We don't know the beginning temperature, and that would be the temperature of the flame. Right. But we do know the change in temperature. So basically, you know that change in temperature would be the hot temperature. Was that the beginning or the ending temperature of the bolt? The beginning. Yeah, the beginning. So that's the hot temperature minus the colder temperature, which would have been the temperature of the water. So we know delta T is 721 because we just figured it right here. We know that Ti is unknown. We're trying to find that. Minus T final. We know T final. It was 53.5. Right. So to solve for Ti, we're going to add 53 as a 0.5. We're going to add that to both sides. So 721 plus 53.5, that's 775. So Ti equals 775 joules. Okay. No, that's wrong unit. Sorry about that. Not joules. So Must be C. Yeah, you're right. Degree C. Oops. Let's erase that again. Do it again. Oh. Sometimes I'm pin challenged here. Erase that. Cut back. There you go. See. All right. So that's the end of page three.